Here's a video about lenses. Now, there are two types of lenses. There are converging or convex lenses and diverging or concave lenses. Let's look at how the rays of light behave with lenses. For the converging lens, notice that the ray of light comes in and they converge on the other side, on what we'll call the positive side of the lens, assuming that our object is over on the left-hand side. So the refracted rays go over here to the positive side. Likewise, with the diverging or concave lens, the refracted rays go on the positive or right-hand side as well, assuming our object is over here on the left-hand side. For the converging uh, lens, most of the time, that's most of the time, not all the time, we get them to converge to make a real image on the positive side. Notice with the diverging, uh, what, we'll, what we will find out is we will find out later on that they actually diverge away from what we call the focal um, point in this case. Um, we'll also learn later on that for converging lenses, the focal length is positive, and for diverging lenses, the um, focal length is negative. Also important, notice that it's thicker in the middle for the converging lens and thinner in the middle for diverging lens. If you have a question as to why that's important, we can go over the refraction of that later. So the important physics topic here, just like with mirrors, it was reflection. For lenses, the important topic is refraction. So Snell's law is very important when it comes to lenses because essentially what we're doing is we're bending the rays of light. All right, so um, just like with mirrors, there's lens ray tracing. Okay, so um, the P ray, just like with the lens, it, I'm sorry, just like with the mirrors, the P ray for a lens travels parallel to the principal axis, then refracts, instead of reflects, refracts through the focus. Then the F ray travels through the focus first, then refracts parallel to the principal axis. The C ray goes through the center of the lens, then continues without bending. So essentially they're doing the same thing that they do with the mirror, but instead of reflecting, they are refracting. Okay? All right. And as usual, you need to draw two of the three principal rays. So the lens equations are similar to the mirror equations. They can be called the lens equation or the mirror equations. Most people call them the lens maker's equations. Actually, this one is called the lens maker's equation, and that's called the magnification equation. Remember, and also remember that this negative sign is only used once. All right. Um, how do we find the focus? So parallel rays of light, well, late rays of light that we would call from infinity. So these rays of light are coming from infinity. They're coming through and focusing all um, at the focal point. That's how we could use a layer, a ray of light to figure out where the focal point is. Or rays of light from infinity um, will converge at the focal point. Okay, ray tracing um, using a converging lens. Now, notice that um, 2F is twice the focal point. That's what that stands for. 2F is twice the focal length, I should say. So here's what happens when the um, object is outside two times the focal length. The P ray goes again parallel first to the principal axis. Here's the principal axis. So it goes parallel to the principal axis, then refracts through the focal point on the other side. The C ray goes straight through the center. Then the um, F ray goes through the focal point first, then goes parallel to the principal axis. And um, there's our image there. We end up with a real image that's inverted and reduced. So let's look at what happens when we put our, our object over at the 
two F spots. We first use our P ray to see where it goes. Then, um, in this case, the C ray. And there's our image. So it turns out being a real image inverted um, and the same or true size as the object. So we let's figure out using this particular setup where S O S I H O and H I R. S O is the object distance. It's how far we are from the actual object to the center of the lens. S I is from the image. Here's our image. It's how far the image is from the center of our lens. H O is the height of our object. And H I is the height of our image. So um, using the converging lens, um, let's ray trace for an object that's put between the focal length and two times the focal length. So there's our P ray, there's our C ray, and there's our image. So in this case we get a real image, it's inverted, and it's larger. For the ray trace of an object that's put at the focal points, similar to the mirror, um, we don't get an image. They, they go out parallel. So we get no image. When it comes to putting an object between the focal length and the center of the lens, we end up with a virtual image. It's over on the negative side of the lens. So in this case, we would say it's virtual, it's upright, and it's larger. So for converging lenses, F is positive, the focal length is positive, SO, the object um, distance is positive, SI is positive for real images, and negative for virtual images. M is negative for real images, and positive for virtual images. HI is negative for real images and positive for virtual images. So stuff you need to know with converging lenses. And notice that some of these are different than the lenses, so you need to keep track of what, um, than the mirrors I should say. So you need to keep track of what's positive and negative for converging lenses as opposed to not only diverging lenses but also converging and diverging mirrors. All right, so let's um, do this problem. Um, I'd like for you to pause this video and try to solve this on your own. Uh, it says a converging lens and it has a focal length of 20 centimeters, has a 5 centimeter high object placed 30 centimeters from it. The first thing we'll do is we'll draw the ray diagram, construct the image, then let's name the image. Let's save this, the lens equations, um, for just a little bit later. So the first thing we do is we've got to make our ray trace. We know that the object is going to be somewhere between the focal point, focal length, and two times the focal length. So in that case, we know that our, our P ray does that, and our C ray does that. And we end up with a larger image. So we know that it's larger, inverted, and real. We've already, already covered that. So next we need to use our lens maker's equation to figure out the distance the image is from the lens. So there's our lens maker's equation right there. And then for SI, we're going to solve for, and SO is 30 centimeters where F is 20. Notice that F is a positive 20 centimeters. It's positive because we are dealing with a converging, converging lens. All right. In solving this, uh, we get an SI that's equal to 60 centimeters. So that's the image distance. Then the magnification. 
we're going to take that 60 centimeters and plug it into here, but we have to re remember that there's a negative sign. We divide it by the object distance, and we get a magnification of negative 2. Right? So our magnification equation, we can rewrite um, to solve it to solve it for the image height. So we take our magnification, which is a negative 2, plug it into there, take our height of the object that was given to us, and we get negative 10 centimeters. All right, so here's a problem that we'll do in class. And that takes us to diverging lenses. Okay, so um, a diverging lens, well, in this particular problem, they want us to um, construct the image for an object located in front of a diverging lens. The great thing about diverging lenses is that there's only one, um, one setup. So the P ray goes um, in that direction, parallel to the um, principal axis. Then it diverges away, um, and the C ray goes straight through. But if we follow those rays, or at least follow the one ray backwards, notice there there's our image. Right there, there's our image. And it's always virtual, always upright, and always smaller or reduced. Okay, so for diverging lenses, F is negative, the focal length is negative, SO is positive, SI is negative, M is always positive and less than 1, HI is positive and always less than HO. Here's a problem we'll do in class as well. And here's another problem we will do later in the units. And that's it.